Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Digital Today's podcast. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And Ron, we have episode 186 today. Yeah, I don't have anything for that. <laughs> yeah, we ran out of cool things a long time ago. <laughs> We, and we've run through the we've run out of you know, uniform numbers. We've gone through the FM dial. We've explained how VHF for for airplanes works. Yeah, I, you know, one eighty six. Yeah, at this point here, it's just going to be one eighty six. That's right. <laughs> hey, ways to get a hold of us? Digitaldice.com is the website. Nine seven eight seven five one dice is the text line. Digital to dice at yahoo.com is our email. And over on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice. And if you'd like to support us on Patreon, we have a couple new Patreons this week. We want to thank everybody who helps keep the show going as we round out year four, I think it is. We're rounding out year yes. four coming up in um, next month, actually July. And we got a big show planned to kick off week uh, year five. And well, I think we've already spoiled that a little bit, but we'll, we'll go into more detail right. a little closer. Uh, over on Patreon dot com slash digital to dice is where you can support the show anyway yeah as you can tell i'm still fighting a little bit of the cold last week i had a massive massive head cold it was beautiful it was 70 degrees 80 degrees last weekend and i was in bed the whole time with a head cold it was it was one of these stupid sicknesses where you you felt pretty good but just your head was was messed up and yeah you know it always you, messes up when it, when it gets in your head yeah you just like man I, you know i'm outside and i'm doing stuff outside and i'm shoveling and cutting the grass and feeling pretty good otherwise except my head was just all swollen up man it was it was nutty and then you, then you just run out of energy and like okay i'm gonna go to bed <laughs> but um so i'm still fighting that off a little bit but anyway here in episode 186 we're gonna talk about do you care who wins and I know we've talked a little bit, do you play to win and the whole bit, but really, when it comes down to it, do you care who wins? That's what we're going to get into it today. It came up at a stream that I was doing this week, one of my blog games. I think someone it did. Asked that. And uh, someone asked that, and you know, I thought about it, and bounced it off of you. We both thought it was, you know, a good topic to have. Yeah. Yeah, you know, do you care who wins? And, you know, well, I don't want to spoil anything. We'll, we'll get into that. We'll talk yeah. about what we think and um, and the whole bit around that when we get into that. Um, now let's get into what we're playing, shall we? Okay. Um, I'll lead off this week, I guess. Um, playing a bunch of bunch of things. I tried out my uh, my new camera, and then I tried out my old camera, I've been doing a lot of video tests. Um, sadly, no more no hitters during video tests. <laughs> yeah, you know there are again there are people who've been doing this for forty five years who've never had one. I mean, and the chances of catching it on on video, you know, every roll, every at bat, people went back and checked it out to make sure that I did get the no hitter, and it was just messed. And I played a good team too. It wasn't like I played a lap team. You know, I played the uh, the 88 Oakland A's and Clemens no hit him. That, that was difficult. I remember, oh, boy, here comes Canseco, and, oh, boy, here comes, you know, this guy, you know. Um, so no more no hitters, but I did try out a couple of new cameras. I, I the, the, the one camera I like for the big overhead shot, it's nice and clear, it's smooth, and it's fantastic. And the other one, um, it's the video camera that I bought years ago, and it's got the really good close-up thing on it. And somehow on YouTube, a video come up, right? And it said, um, hey, if you have this camera, they have a new firmware update. Well, the firmware update was like a year and a half ago. Because <laughs> I mm -hmm. never thought to update it. I just said video camera. I take my videos and I upload it, right? Well, it turns out they made it so you can stream with this camera. Oh, nice. And it's a game changer as far as really getting in and seeing the clarity of the cards. It's it's unbelievable. Um, the only thing is it still works off a little bit of a battery, so you got to make sure that your batteries are charged, and you couldn't stream for hours on end with it. But, you know, for, to run a game or something like that, you know, to zoom in on the cards or for an unboxing, I think I'm going to go with that one there. It, like I said, there's a lot of things you got to do to set it up. You know, you can't just plug it in. Um, but once you do everything, it is pretty nice. It is very nice. So I've been having some really good luck with the cameras lately. Um, doing some more golf. I I actually played some Inside the Cup. 
from um, Inside Games. I, I pulled that out on the computer, played a couple of holes. That's a fun game. I just, yeah. I, need, I really need to read up on how to play it again because I was still kind of guessing on some things. That's a super fun game, Inside the Cup. All the Inside Games are super fun. They really, yeah, I really enjoyed that so much. Um, the new season of Shootout Hockey come out, 22-23. And, you know, that's... Um, I'm getting a little bit better now at dealing with what happened. Since Florida's in the finals now, it makes it a lot easier. Yes. <laughs> you know? And you know what people were saying, too? Is they said, if you think about it, we've gone from how did the Bruins lose to the Panthers to how did the Bruins even win three games? Well, they swept Carolina. Yeah, and they took out Toronto in five. You're right. So, I mean, the Bruins gave them the toughest series. So it's gone from how, how the heck does... um. Does 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 Boston lose? To how the heck did Boston even win any games at this point here? And, and somehow Vegas is favored. I think they should be. Vegas is the better team. Florida's, you know, they're on a streak. Now, how long that streak goes, we'll find out. But oh, it needs to be four more games. This is true. This, you is know, true. I mean, it's like uh, the Bruins' historically good regular season team. Yeah, no, I, I, there's no way I would bet on Vegas. So I was a, it, I, I think I'm going to watch Florida. this one. I usually don't watch it because I don't really like the teams that are in there, but I'm going to watch this one. This one could be fun. I think I'm going to watch this one. Um, For so, the record, I did stay Denver before game one last night on my stream yesterday. Okay. All right. And that's so, um, so I have Denver and the Panthers. Is that soccer? Oh, what is Denver? Denver. Denver. What is NBA? It? Oh, basketball. NBA oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 10 million people watch it. It's okay. <laughs> Oh, I know, I know, right? Um, let me see. What else did I play? So I played uh, some shootout hockey. Uh, so I played Boston, Florida, and wouldn't you know it, Florida beat them 5-2 to two in game one. Mm, yeah, I don't think that's going to last. I think Bruins will come back and win that series. Uh, yeah, I think Florida will sweep, but that's nice. Yeah. I did an unboxing of my uh, Stone Cold hockey cards that come in the mail, and I had 93-94, and... A lot of great suggestions on what to do with that season. So, of course, I played the Rangers in the Devils series. Played that out in shootout hockey. Played it mostly offline. Did one game online. Shootout hockey. Once I get, I mean, I'm stone cold hockey. Once I get back into that, that, oh, man, that's a fun game. It is a fun game. It really is. And you can just play that all night. That's how fun it is. And I, I played one game, and it was boring as heck. One nothing Devils, and I'm like, man, you know, this, this shootout hockey, I mean, stone cold hockey, it's, it's fun, but sometimes it can really be lame right what happens i pull the goalie and with 20 seconds left the rangers tie it one to one i was like oh that was pretty cool so i roll the dice and i roll the one for the timing die and i'm I'm not 100 percent sure but i think that you know if you're in the final 20 seconds if you roll the one you do get that last playoff and yeah you should anything beyond that i think it ends cuz i know you, you go you leave the empty net time cuz you're in the final minute but i i still think that um that technically you can get a get a playoff with 20 seconds left so i i took a screenshot of the dice roll it was a 1 to keep it within the game time the rangers got control they got a column a shot and they scored they scored two goals in the last 20, 20 something seconds or under 40 seconds to steal game one, two to one. I was like, that's why I play this game mm-hmm. because of those crazy finishes. It was so fun. So, um, so I played some, uh, stone cold, some shootout, some inside the cup. And I probably played something else off the top. Oh, I played some, um, more stratomatic baseball basic with, um, my 1979 season. And then I played a, uh, when I did a test. I played a game of Appa baseball. So I've been doing a, a whole bunch of different things like that. There you um, go. I'm really, really liking my my basic baseball games. They work. Yeah, they actually work. You know, and I've been meaning to pull out the season ticket because that was my go to game for the longest time. And I need to pull that out again and get back into something that's a little bit um, not as basic. Um, but it's just, I love the Strat Basic Baseball. I do, and I love the APA. And and they both do different things. Sometimes I'm in the mood for Strat. Sometimes I'm in the mood for APA. You know, and that's the great thing about having both. You can, you can really kind of choose which one you want to play, you know. Um, 
And then aside from that, I think I, that's about all I've been playing. I like I say, I was sick for for five days last week and didn't play anything. You know, and when you get sick and it's in your head, you you don't want to play because you just like, oh no, you can't talk. You really just want to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah you, you know, you 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 have energy. Like you, I felt my body had energy, but holy cow, the um the mental that's what it was the mental thing. Like I, I could just watch TV for an hour and then it's like I'm gonna go lay down. And it's like, do I want to play a game? It's like, no, I got no 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 attention span right now to sit and try to play a game or learn a game or anything like that. You know, yeah, when you get the sniffles, the last thing you want to do is. Yeah. Just, and then it, I, I coughed. I was like a cough. And then it finally just went full blown into my, I knew it was sinuses at that point because I was like, man, my head just feels like it's going to explode. But I mean, it's pretty much been snowing pollen here. Oh yeah. It could be allergies the, the, too. The willow, tr- the willow trees have had enough that you'd think they're ready to take a nap. Hmm. Yeah. So see, my wife is walking home from work last night, and she said it looked like snow in, in the lights, mm. just from the wind is blowing oh, around. Yeah. And this morning, that when we went out to get some coffee, um, in all the cracks and crevices, it looks like dandelion oh, pollen. But we live bad. in town; there's no dandelions here, and they're certainly not producing that amount of pollen. Mm. And so, yeah, if if you have allergies, we're so sorry. Yeah, yeah, our cars are all yellow. I, I take a daily fake Claritin, and that's how I get through the, the day for that. But yeah. if it's legitimately cold, I think I was taking yeah. I was taking stuff like that, the Allegra's and stuff to get through it, and uh, so it could kill the whole bunch of gaming because it was like, and, and it was a beautiful day outside, three beautiful days. It's like, man, I could walk the dog, I could go out in the yard, put some, nope, just <laughs> stayed in bed, and and that was about it. You know, luckily I had work off for the holiday weekend, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of um. What I've been doing is just kind of some light gaming, nothing real heavy, but um, mm-hmm. you know when you when you don't play for a few days and you finally play something, oh man, you miss it so much. Yeah, you do. You 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 just do. You know, it's you know you can watch TV all day long, but when you play a game and you're pulling out the cards and you're rolling the dice and just figure it, it's just that's the happy place. It really is, you know. And now I know you've been running some some tests over there in your equipment too. We seem to have uh, solved the. Uh, the, the airplane noise over your place. Right. You know, the air conditioner and the fan are running. I mean, it's been, it was 97 in town a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. Uh, I was, I was like, okay, we got to get you a new microphone because, you know, when you get the AC and the fan going, you can really hear the room noise at your place. And, you know, not that yeah. anybody complains or anything, but, you know, I still want a good show and the whole bit. So we got to fix that. Maybe a directional mic or something. And I stumbled on this video of this guy who, who just installed some software and he took a leaf blower, and he and he was banging on the desk with a ham and had a leaf blower, and he was talking into the microphone, and it was like there was no leaf blower or a hammer, and I don't know how it does it. I had no idea. But um, it works through your graphics card. Oh, really? Something, something because it was through Nvidia. Um, so it works with the graphics card and your graphics card usually doesn't do one too much unless you're playing a, a heavy set game or, or streaming or something like that. And I think it just kind of takes because there's like millions of clock cycles in a given second. As for, I mean, that's how far we've advanced with this technology that it just takes what you do in pretty much in real time. And it may delay it a millisecond or two, mm-hmm. but recognizes what what is it should be doing and what is background noise. And um, I've noticed in my streams this week that there's no extraterraneous noise when when I'm going. Yeah, yeah, and we also um we I think we fixed your microphone a little bit too with the uh, the patent on. We the changed mic. the setting, but yeah, because I know you did. I forget which video it was you did this week. You said, hey, I just put up a new video, and I went there, and immediately I was like, holy cow, there's no... I think it was the OOTP one, I think, was the first one I did with Yeah, it. because it you could cool. hear you clear, and there was no room noise at all going on. I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of nice. So we've been fighting that for, you know, four summers now. Um, so now it sounds sounds pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, it's a portable AC. It's, they're not quiet. No, they're not. You know, we work. <laughs> they, it, they, but, they are quiet. But I'm, I'm just I'm just happy now that we we've kind of yeah. fig- figured that out at least for now, and um, so hopefully you'll sound better. But um, what have you been playing? Siren. No, I. Do what? Did you hear the siren? No. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm in a way I'm gonna miss that. I missed the sirens. I missed the bomber jets. Um. 
We haven't had the bomber jets in a while, but it, we'll see if it blocks the F because we have F 35s at the airport because it's also an Air National Guard base. Oh, is it? Or airport, it, airport there was sometimes so. there was some well placed sirens that went by your place. There really were. Always. I pay extra for that. <laughs> Should I get to what I'm playing? Please do. Okay. So Indy 500 was Sunday, and I watched that. We don't watch a lot of TV, but I watched all of that. And um, I'm of the school at 500 miles is 500 miles, and I feel bad for the driver that got passed on the last on the last green lap, but it was lap 200. And so last year I replayed it on the same day. This year I got a bit tired and it started to warm up, and so I actually did it Tuesday uh, in motorsport. And it takes a long time because it's all done in Excel and – well, I know people watching people play on Excel spreadsheets is not the most exciting thing in the world, but um, the real life winner, Joseph Newgarden, spun in the next to last segment, which caused the guy that had won, Marcus Erickson, who won last year's race, and if he'd won the real race this year, would have won $420,000 from Borg Warner, who sponsors the trophy. I guess every year it's $20,000 for each year that someone doesn't win back-to-back. So he was going to win an extra 420000 for that. That buys and a lot of that, seasons. <laughs> that, that buys a lot of seasons. Yes, it does. And so um, I wasn't – Newgarden had to do something to lose the race, and he did. And so in my race, Marcus Erickson won. However, because it's – when I do those sort of things, it's very much slap editing. It's it's start, it's pause, it's start, it's pause, it's start, it's pause. And for those last couple drivers, apparently I thought I was going live to tape, and it was paused. And obviously when I realized that, I couldn't you know, recreate the thing. I'd already written everything on the sheets. And so I just pretended that NBC went to commercial. Like, what do you mean you went to commercial in the, at the end of the race? How dare you do that? But... But anyway, so so that was fun. That that motorsport is one of those again, motor um car auto racing, championship auto racing, whether it's NASCAR or Formula One or IndyCar, really needs a Richard Hanna game. Mm. I really think that people would play it. I mean, there's you don't necessarily have to be a gearhead. We've we, we've talked about classic F one on the show, and that one. It is so down in the weeds. It's a tremendous game, and Anthony has done such a good job with it, but it's a three-hour thing without streaming a single part of it. I can't imagine how long it would take to do to, to do that. It's lap by lap. So, But there's enough out there I think people would do because Formula One is a global sport, and you know people still watch NASCAR and, and IndyCar. So I think it would get some love if someone did, did that. Mm. It's kind of too bad that, that, that's not out there. So did that, and again, Marcus Erickson, you know, send me the four hundred twenty thousand, and we'll be even. <laughs> um, also, did the uh, Action PC replay two thousand one. Actually, had a game on my wedding anniversary. Hmm. My third, because we're doing two thousand one. So this happened to be a Wednesday that year. So I'm looking up. Oh yeah, the games of August eighth, two thousand one. No memory of any of them. Actually, did a Red Sox game on my anniversary. I guarantee you that Sarah and I were not watching the Red Sox in Oakland at ten thirty on, on our wedding anniversary. <laughs> so we we moved now to um, we're almost halfway through August. I know I started this in January, but it's just every time I look and go, "Wow, we're kind of zipping right through here." It's also the first time in years that we haven't had to stop for daily entertainment for COVID or a walkout in baseball. So it's actually only been three streams a week. Imagine that. What else? Uh, I took advantage of Strat's Memorial Day sale to do some future stuff. I bought, um, but what a deal. It was what? It yeah. was 10% off of one, 20% off of two, and 30% off of three or more. Yep. yep. Rosters, computer things. And so I purchased uh, the Japanese All Stars, which was new this year. Um, and Ichiro's card is pretty good. Uh, the Cuban stars, which I really don't know mu- much about those, the Hall of Fame set. So everyone that's in the Hall of Fame through inducted into this year, David Ortiz is a pretty nice card. And the Negro League stars to try to do some sort of maybe world baseball project or something like that. Josh Gibson, catcher from the 40s, 
considered to be the greatest home run hitter of all time. His one column, both versus lefties and righties, is just almost one solid home run. It's not, <laughs> obviously not all the way, but you, you get any sort of one in a top half on a one, and that ball is gone. Nice. So so did that, and of course, after I'm recovering from the last Strat sale, I got um, basketballs on sale this time around. So if you don't have the game and you're interested, and I honestly think this is the best of the Strat games, you can get that in the card image for 28 bucks. Oh yeah, that's and it, a, yeah, and it comes with last season. That's a great chance to try yeah. that game out. Yeah, and the seasons, the computer seasons are twenty percent off, no limit. I just bought Strat computer seasons, man, through something that the, oh, through my three sixty five sale. So, but we'll be hitting that one too. So not to plug one game over the other, but yeah, I think I picked up three or four Strat seasons too. I mean, thirty percent off, like twenty and thirty percent off. That's when I load up on my PC seasons. You know, was I got four for the price of two and a half. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's what that's I did too. Good. Yep, I I picked up. Um, I forget what years I got. I think I got seventy three and eighty eight and sixty nine and. Maybe one other one. Maybe I got an older one, like 1908 or something like that. I forget what I got. But I picked up four seasons as well. And, and that, that's when you get them. You know, when, when you have sales, wink, wink, APA, wink, wink, APA, you know, you tend to buy a lot more, you know. I mean, that's a deal and a half. In, in, um, yeah. You know, and, and it's stuff that I might not normally buy at normal price. That's the thing. Or if oh, I did, I, I would, I would what, get. That's what I did for the Memorial Day sale. Yeah. It was, you know, stuff I'd thought about. I said, no, nah, you know, I'll get it. On a rainy day, oh go here you go. Here's yeah. your rainy day. Yep, that's what I do too. You know, so it's it's nothing. I wouldn't buy all four at normal price normally. You know, but um, I might buy one. You know, if I was going to do right. something. But that, you know, when you have the sales, you know, we did a whole show on sales and sales sale. <laughs> you know, the curious thing because since we've done it since what we were playing last, I did um opening night Celtics eighty nine ninety, and they're old at that point. It's uh it's okay. It's still Bird McHale and Parish. But DJs can't shoot anymore, and Ainge is is off to someplace else. And uh, Reggie Reggie Lewis, that's always hard to pl- play someone you know isn't going to live much longer. Yeah. Have you had that? Have you actually had that pop up? You play someone like a Pele Lindbergh or, or someone that you know. Yeah. I, I, well, you know what's even worse is is you know I played somebody that just passed away. Yeah, like I'll play a Bruins game, and you know one of the Bruins that had just died, Pete McNabb or Gary Doak or something like that. It's like, oh, right. it, it, yeah. But knowing that that person isn't going to live much longer, uh, to me, it's a little different than a tribute game because they're always immortalized in the cards. You can go back and mm. and relive them. Because um, you're doing seventy nine, I think you're past when when Thurman Munson passed. But to sit there and know. Oh, look at that virtual card and know what his future is. Yeah. To me, that's kind of hard. Mm-hmm. I'll play more of those games because he could, he could actually play a couple different positions. Um, so they're, they're no longer at the top level, but they haven't hit that mid 90 slide where they just became unwatchable. Yeah, and then we yeah. won't even talk about the Patino years. So who would they play opening night? I have to redo a game with the Bulls because Scotty Pippen has too many fouls too early and they didn't have enough players dressed. Um, so you can see where they can play in stretches. They can be the mid 80s Celtics. And then they get caught up. And so you can see where fa- it's interesting because you can see in strap basketball how father time is okay. You can play really good for 30 of the 48 minutes. Mm. How are, we, how are we going to do that? It, it, again, it's just one of those neato, nifty things about, about we did the whole show, the magic of cards and dice, because not everything we play is the super season. Mm. But, yeah. I mean, when I we'll have to restart the, the Bulls game, they'd pull the head of the Bulls. And so, like, mm. wow, where did this come from? You know, again, they're still never count out Larry Bird. Never yeah. count out Larry yeah. Bird. So. Yeah. But so yeah, so I gotta take advantage of that. So yeah, every it just I don't I we I don't, I still don't know how they do it, but they do it. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it's, and it's cool. But but you know they're not gonna do it long. <laughs> you 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 knew then that they that, yeah. that they had crested, but yeah. it's like you still come on, you got one more run in you, don't you? Yeah, I know, I know. 
I've, I've run into that with some teams as well. It's like, well, you know, they're a little bit past the prime, but we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can get them over the finish line. And eh, sometimes you do, sometimes you yep, don't. Sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't. <laughs> so, uh, so that's pretty much what I'm so, – so baseball and, and some purchases and – the motorsport really is a good game. I really wish that it showed better because mm. you can run anything in it. I'm not I've never done NASCAR. I'll have to pull out some to do that. Um, the the key is because the charts give away the game, can't really show you that deep how it works because right. you, you know you the person that sells you know the the game designer trusts that you're going to to honor what they want you to do. And because every race is, is basically you you give people points based on where they start and how they finish. Mm -hmm. And so there are no sets you can run again. You can literally run anything. It's it's one of those catch 22s. Yeah. You want to show off how it plays so people can get an idea. But at the same time, if sometimes, sometimes if you do that, you you do give it away. So you 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 never want to give, give it away. Yeah. Sometimes you got to give away a little bit just just to give an idea what's going right. on, you know. But you, you know. what I did with that before the broadcast was I took the first few minutes to explain some of the mechanics of the game, and it's always tough when you are doing cards and dice. Now, do you call it as a cards and dice game, or, or do you call it as an actual event? And it's hmm. so much easier to do on the computer because it's doing all the the bookkeeping for you. But right. I, I've struggled with that, so. Hmm. That could be a good show topic too. Is, you know, games that are fun but just they don't show off very well. You know, right? And then we got a lot of games like that. Boy, that was a blast. But someone watching me play this is going to be bored out of would their be mind. bored. Would be bored. Yeah. All right. So we move on to the topic of the day. Yes. Now our Patreon, Bernie who's got a YouTube channel and been posting some stuff and plays a lot of sports, asked me the other day during a live stream, do do you play, do you care who wins or loses, or are you just playing for the fun of it? And I thought about doing it as a as a Uncle Ron question thing, and the more I thought about it, like, no, I think, I think we both can answer this in, in, in both different ways. I mean, yes and no, and so... Do you care? Do you care who wins? Is is how I got. But so that's how the topic came up with. And so I'll, I'll let you go first. Um, I think when I first started playing the cards and dice stuff in these games here, I really did, you know, because I was fairly new to it and the whole bit. And yeah, I expected the Bruins to win every game, and I expected Bobby Orr to score on every shot, and Larry Bird to hit every shot, and you know um, Jerry Chivas to make every save. And then when that didn't happen, I, it was I was a little disappointed about it. Um, and then you know I remember doing a lot of early sixty nine seventy Bruins versus Blues games, and the Blues were were beating the Bruins quite a bit in that. So their goaltending was fantastic. Yeah, their goaltending was. Out. They were a good team, the St. Louis Blues, back in the – well, when they finally got to the 69 finals, they were. Um, and, and and so for the longest time, I, I was playing just to, to win. I wanted the, the team that I wanted to play to win, you know, Patriots, Bruins, all the home teams, you know, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, any of my favorite teams, I wanted them to win. And um, now that I've been playing this for, you know, a handful of years, now, now I – um. I sometimes will play a game with the intent purpose of just seeing seeing who wins. I'll I'll play a a a game between two teams that I don't have any love or any hatred for and just enjoy watching the game play out, enjoy seeing the names come up from the past and just enjoying the nostalgia of it. And sometimes you get a really good game and it's like, boy, that was so much fun. And it's you know, and then there's other times that you play games that yeah, one of the teams you do want to win because you like them or you have a connection to them. Um, and there's also times that you you play a game where you're playing a team that you don't like and you want to lose, and so that comes up sometimes too. And so I I think when I early on I really did care who who won. Now though. And it's not all the time, you know, because there's times I still get upset when, you know, what team I want to win, lose. Um, 
But now I try to enjoy the journey and I try to enjoy the storyline. Okay. Is what I'm trying to do. And, um, so I'm much better now at dealing with losses. If you know, cause you know, you always tend to root for a team. I, I don't care what they say. You get two teams playing the chances are you, you do kind of want one to win for whatever reason, you know, and, and if they do, they do, they don't, they don't. But sometimes, you know, you do want a team to win a little bit more than, than the next, but, you know, I've kind of realized that, you know, as, as emotional as you get with these things, and we get emotional. These these are part of our past. Of we do. And we get real emotional about this, that I'm not going to change what really happened. So I played a, um, a hockey replay one time. I don't know if it was 78 or 79, and, and Boston won the cup, right? It doesn't change real life. <laughs> Boston did not win the cup. But for me, they won it, and yay, they won it. It was kind of fun, you know. Um, you got the Lego Cup too. That that is just so awesome. Yeah, I like to bring that out when I do the cards and dice. That's kind of fun to to bring Phil out with the the cup and have a little presentation and the whole bit. That yeah, just makes it kind of fun when I do that. Um, but for myself now, when I play, I I try to enjoy the game. Although when I played my spiders, I got to say. That last game, even though I was playing as the other team, I was still rooting for the Spiders. I think. Oh, but that was special. Everybody I mean, was rooting for the Spiders in that last game, you know. Um, so there's times that I, I think maybe it depends on the game sometimes too. The counter of that for you would be that Bruins Ranger series you played in three or four different engines. And I think sometimes people kind of can get caught up in, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Mm. And when we took a deeper look at them, I'm not picking on you specifically, but when we took a deeper look at that Ranger squad from 70-71, the question was not why did they beat the Bruins. It's kind of like the Florida run this year. Mm. It's like how the hell did they not win this in real life? Yeah, because when I played them, I think I was – what was I in? It was, I was hockey, like, hockey Bones you hockey played Hockey Bones in. I played in, and I was like, holy cow, they kicked the crap out of the Bruins here. I said, these cards are messed up. And then I pulled out the Apple cards. And they were exactly the same. The Apicots were exactly the same. The, the Rangers I, were rated better than Boston. And I, and I ran that in action PC hockey, and it wasn't even really a contest. Mm. And so, oh, okay. And again, math is a fickle thing. Math doesn't know if you got into a fight the night before or how much you drank or if your girlfriend cheated on you or, or whatever. It's just going on what it was for a regular season. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, th- those were things. I think we talked about it on a show that you know, if you weren't familiar with the game, would make you question the validity of the game because, in real life, the Bruin it wasn't close. Right, it was like fifteen, right. sixteen points, wasn't it? Mm. And this was before overtimes and points that you got with yeah. with with well, that. Yeah. So a, a little more, and so so yeah. I mean, there's there. Uh, the the games give you an opportunity to do that and may give a false impression that the Rangers should have won. And again, you know, we could go back and read newspapers yeah. and, and and figure it out. But so the, so this the, the emotional part of it is there for well, me, and it should never go away. Yeah. It should never be. So I think when oh, we, yeah, when happened. I sit down with a game. I, you know, sometimes you look and you look at the cards in the table and you're like, oh, you know, I, do, I this is always one of my favorite players. I'd like to see him win tonight, you know what I mean, or at least get a goal or, or a touchdown or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, the other part of it is, as is, is, do you care who wins, is, you know, sometimes you're playing a game and someone out of the blue just has a crazy game. And you're like, man, I really want – this guy's team to win just just so he could be the star of the game. You know, this guy got a, a goal or two that made no sense. Um, you know, maybe, um, you know, th- this guy here, you know, hit, hit a free throw, a bunch of free throws or three-pointers or, you know, caught a couple of touchdowns, you know, or, you know, pick, pick your game, hit a couple of home runs or went three for three. You know, someone that's you know, a ninth hitter just had a great game. So sometimes while you're playing the games – you start to root for a team just because of what's going on in the game. And I find yes. that, that happens a lot too. You know, you get a team that's coming d- that down by whatever and they start mounting a comeback, you know, or maybe they're the vast underdog. You, you, you took, you know, Sportsman Z likes to play Mismatch Monday is what it's called. And he plays a good team against a bad team. And maybe the bad team is hanging in there. And you're like, man, if they could just pull out this this game, that would be 
you know, that would be fantastic. So sometimes while you're playing the game, that that kind of, kind of sways who you want to win too. And again, not that you cheat and try to make them win, but you, you could st- you could still play the game and root for somebody. You know, you you could root. I, it, when I started the streaming thing, I realized that you know there's two ways to approach it. You can you can always play your favorite team and root for your team to do that, and it makes it more entertaining when when those teams losses or. You treat it like a like a national football broadcast where, look, you, you could be at the Meadowlands with the Jets one week, and you could be in Buffalo the next, and then you could be out in Arizona with the Cardinals, and you, you might have seen six different teams in that. And, and I've always kind of had the Vin Scully philosophy as, of course, I want my team to win, uh, but I don't. But there's nothing I'm going to do to make that happen. And so you, you can you can root for a team without using the word we, because although I manage these things, you know there was, isn't much that I do. And so because you pick, you know the whole point of Retro Sports Network is to parachute into a place, do whatever it is you're going to do, and then move on to the next thing. There's you, you get attached to stories, but I no I I've you've you know. Every year we've done has been a decent Yankee year. And I grew up a Red Sox fan. I really don't want the Yankees to win. But the way I set up the parameters for my projects is that unless the Red Sox are playing, I'm playing as the home team. Well, it means that sometimes I'm playing as the Yankees. And mm. I, I don't want, I don't put my thumb on the scale. I, so if they win, then okay. I mean, the people, majority of people who I'm watching probably wants the Yankees to win. Not necessarily the ones in my chat, but the, but the but the ones that are watching, and so you you really you know learned just from from being older that if you sit there and go, oh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are crap and blah 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 blah, and the Oakland Raiders cheat and there, and I can't believe they won, and how did this happen? He, he, again, you know, you, you it's like no, no, I mean it's it's so so no, I I really. For the public performances, I'm really not a big fan of whatever happens, happens. The story comes within the game. If it's a team I rooted for growing up, great. Mm -hmm. And if I do in a Red Sox game, I might, you know, root to them a little bit more on air than I would for anyone else. But if they lose, they lose, and I'll poke fun at them for that. Um, When I do my offline projects such as football or or Celtics or whatever, and I'm specifically playing that team. Yes, I want the team I'm playing to, to win, but generally I'm playing against myself. And so I look, if I get beat or if the team that I am want to win gets beat, I understand how it got there. And I think maybe because we're older, I can appreciate more how it, it got there. I did a Pistons Knicks game a couple of weeks ago. Again, just playing for myself, and I extremely disliked the Detroit Pistons of that era. <laughs> but uh, the Knicks weren't going to beat them, and you knew that going in. And but the, the Detroit was the defending world champions, and just in an hour that I played the game, I certainly understood why the Pistons won, and that was fun. I mean, they're really, I mean, Lambeer, Bill Lambeer, as much as I despise Bill, he was really one of the first centers to really have a three-point shot. And how do you defend against a center that can shoot from anywhere on the floor? (laughs) Right. You know, and Isaiah was Isaiah, and Dumars was never got the credit, I don't think, for for being a a good shooter. And so, like, well, why did they win two championships? Well, where's where's their weakness? (laughs) <laughs> and, and again, it's sort of going, oh, I can't believe that these people won on my tabletop and how do they do that? Like, no, you understand why why that was. The When I did the Islander replay at Action PC and, and played my Canadians in the final, I wanted the Islanders to win. I knew they weren't. Mm. And I wasn't rooting for the team that I root for the most. That was kind of weird. But I wasn't upset when Montreal won or when New York lost. We stole a game at the forum. That was great. Um, but that that's about it. And so I guess no. I, I think for me is that something over time will start to develop in a series project. And I mean, yeah, if you get beat on a last second shot or you get the losses that I 
don't like the most are when you get crushed because then it's hard to stay emotionally involved in the game, especially if you're offline mm. while, while you're playing it. So if I'm playing a team that I like, let's just say Red Sox, and I'm down 6 nothing in the third inning. Now, if it's early enough in the day and I'm not awake, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll just group play that one again and I will always take the you know result of the second game. But if I've been if I'm wide awake and it's the middle of the afternoon, no, let's just finish this out. Mm. You know, trying trying to keep that and trying to keep in mind, you know, to keep it exciting. Those are the ones that I kind of struggle with with that because not only is it the result I don't want, it's a boring game. If you get walked off, you get upset for the moment for whatever reason, but if you're going with the Red Sox and their bullpen of histories, you you understand why. <laughs> you know? mm. So, yeah, so they're bringing back the childhood nightmares isn't there. But, no, it doesn't. I don't think I've stopped the project because my team lost or, or, or that. It's just, okay, let's just move, you know, baseball, let's move on to the next game. There's been times that I've played a game, probably hockey games because, you know, it's my passion, and I've, I've been playing some Bruins games, and boy, I it's like I couldn't get a scoring chance one night in hockey bones to save my life. I went deep into the third period before I even could have the possibility of scoring a goal. That was kind of maddening. Yes, you know, again, I I get it's fake in the whole bit, but it's still there comes a point. Where it's like, holy cow, what's it going to take to get a scoring chance? Are the dice rolls that yeah, bad? It's the era that you play, the Bruins made the playoffs twenty seven straight years. Yeah, but I mean, there's times that I play. It's like, man, this is just out of control, you know. And then I I played a game in, uh, against Vancouver. I was up by four goals, and they came back and they beat me. And I was like, man, you know. And so I do still still, you know. Sometimes I I do care, and and how you lose some. Sometimes I guess maybe that's a whole nother show on how you lose, you know, sometimes you take it better than, than other times. I still try to weave a storyline in and say, Hey, this is what happened in the whole bit and, and yada, 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 yada. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's times that, you know, I've had some bad losses and, and it's like, and eh, I don't care who wins, but this was a bad loss. And it, it, it that, that kind yeah, of the, the bad, the bad, the bad ones are the worst in the last year in the, the 85 playoffs. It became quite apparent that no one was going to beat John Tudor of the St. Louis Cardinals, and that if the Dodgers were going to win that NLCS, that they they had to win the four games that Tudor did not pitch, and that series went seven, but they weren't touching Tudor, mm-hmm. and was able to go through and have Tudor pitch game one of the World Series, and so when poor Toronto got to St. Louis in that World Series. Uh, they were they were Blue Jays were in the situation where a there was no DH that year and it's American League team so they were well behind the eight ball and now you're going to face John Tudor three times that you knew that those were two losses right there and that was interesting in a way because it would have been a major it's, I mean some players just go on these Bobrovsky for Florida for right now just go on these magnificent runs where you're just not beating them. You were just not beating him. And, I mean, you never want to say never, but when you hit that button to start the stream and you're showing who the, the pitcher is, you know who's won that game. You can you can try to manage your best, and you could just kind of feel, you know, I mean, these things kind of take on a personality of their own. You, felt, you kind of felt bad for the Blue Jays at that point because there really wasn't anything, anything that they could do. Mm-hmm. Except for when the other four and they got swept and, and, and Tudor swept them in game four. It's like, nope. Uh, it, sometimes you just get so good and so dominant that, I mean, yes, we're going to play the game. And yes, it's possible that he will give up a couple of runs, but it was over. Well, the, it was the, over. the thing that I've come to realize that my, um, my hockey wheelhouse and my baseball wheelhouse are dominated by Yankees and Canadians. Mm-hmm. So, if I go back and play anything at a time that I really enjoyed as a kid, you know, the Yankees were always awesome in baseball back then. And the Sox were always, you know, the second place team, third place team. And the same with the Bruins. They they would hung, hang around there, but they were always second fiddle to Montreal. So when I play those seasons, I you know, I got to keep in mind that, you know, I'm going right into the 
the jaws of my past, you know, right. where and that's the horrors of too. my past, if you will, you know, because how many times did I stay up and the Bruins would lose four to three to Montreal and the Sox would lose, you know, two to one to the Yankees or something. It just, um, th- but that's just the era that I enjoy playing. So when I go in, I know that the team that I didn't like as a kid is going to be heavily favored to win. And so that, that plays a lot in it, too. And, and I've talked about this in the past. I've come to kind of terms with the Yankees and the Canadians now of the past. Um, I still don't like it when they win just because that's just kind of how it's been. Right. But um, I've come to respect those teams more. Like I pulled out the Canadians the other day. And I forget what year it was. It was back in the day, and I forget who they played. But I laid out the squad, and I'm just like, man, this third line would be starting on any other team in the league. Oh, oh yeah. And I'm um, looking at this, and go, this is just not fair. This yeah. really is not fair. You know, and, and but that's just how it was back then. So um, imagine growing up in the mid '80s and not being a Celtics and the Lakers fan, and they played what? Oh yeah, four times in, yeah, so four if, times in five years. Yeah. And they started 10 Hall of Famers. Started. Both teams, starting five, all in the hall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so if you were, you know, a, a team that was in Boston, L.A., I mean, occasionally Detroit or Philadelphia mm-hmm. would slip in from time to time. But, yeah, you were, you were fighting an uphill battle, you know, against the Celtics and the Lakers. That's absolutely sure. So if I want to play favorites locally, i got to play basketball. And I do. I play a lot of those 80 Celtics teams, and, and, mm-hmm. and they're kind of fun. When I do that there. Uh, yes, but it, so that's the other thing. I got to keep in mind that there's a lot of teams that um, that that I'm going to be playing either for or against in the the Yankees and Canadians. And, and you know, even Dodgers to a point. Not that I, I mind the Dodgers at all, but they went to a lot of World Series too, you know. And so if I'm going to be playing those, those late 70s, early 80s, there's going to be a lot of Yankee Dodgers, you know, at the top there. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other teams I like. Like right now, even in my 79 season, there's a lot of players and teams that I like in that season. And they're, you know, 20 games out of first place right now. And and it's like, I'd love to play this team. And and it's kind of like what you talk about when you stream. Because you're like, you want to play the better teams, you know, especially coming down the the stretch because the the games are more important. And and I always thought, you know, something, I don't care. I'm going to play the two last place teams. It's going to be fun. But now that I'm doing a full season replay and – I'm looking at the standings. It's like, you know, this this Mets-Braves game, it doesn't mean anything because they're so far back. And even if I played the third-place team, if they're seven or eight back, that that that's still an important game to, to a certain degree, you know. They still might not catch it, but if they can win this one, they're a little bit closer. But the, right. t- the teams that are 17 back, <laughs> you know, they're done. And so I, 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 no. I, I kind of see that now. It's like you don't want to play those teams. Yeah. If you care about the team, I mean, if you were in a single team, single team project, that's a different story because then you get caring about, you know, what did Dale Murphy do or what did Bob Horner do or, or what, you know, what did Phil Necro do? I mean, that, 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 that is important. And I think that's why people do some of that stuff. But as far as, you know, if you're looking down at a macro, you know, game of the way, it's like, you know, no, a fourth place team and a fifth place team is, is not compelling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes if there's like a couple of name players on there, and there's a lot of guys that's like, oh man, I love this guy and I love that guy, and you know, and, but it's like, yeah, you, you're kind of out of it, dude. And it's just like, I'd rather play a team that if if a, a win means more to a team at this point here than it does to you. And and it's weird because we'll hit the end of September in about a month or so, or about six about six weeks because I got vacation coming up, and. Then you gotta play those teams because if they're playing a first place team that's trying to clinch, and you play a team that's like lost ninety five games and they've got all of their double A players are up, well, you gotta show it because the game means a lot. Doesn't mean a lot to the team that's that that you know got already has their their tea times reserved for the first day of the off season. But yeah. I I will play those games too. I think I did that the other day where. The last place team was playing the first place team and says, I'm, I'm going to bring them in here and see if they can get smashed. And and I think they, they actually kept it close and then lost at the end there. But it still was like, okay, you know, th- that's when I will play the last place team if they're playing a team in contention because it's like, okay, you need, yeah. to, you need to beat the Mets here. No, no questions asked. You got to beat the Mets here. You're in second or third place. You're chasing the pennant. You know, if you lose to the last place team here, then, you know, then – 
you deserve to not win, you know? But I, I, you know, I think to, to kind of wrap this up in a bow, I mean, my 49 replay, the Yankees won the World Series, which they did in real life. They did it in five games like they did in real life, and they beat Brooklyn in five games as they did in real life. And I think the individual results of the games who won the games match the five in real life. Hmm. Okay, that happens, and you expected it because you do that going in. To but to go but game five of that in Brooklyn, uh, the Yankees for the computer went with a guy by the name of Fred. I've told the story before. Fred Sanford, who is not one of their Yankees frontline starters. You normally he would be you go the number two, but for whatever reason, the computer didn't want to go with them. They went with Fred Sanford. That's that's who they told me to go with. Okay, well, the Dodgers might actually have a chance here. I mean, because back then, if you weren't good enough to start, you got thrown in the bullpen. That's That was the whole point. Like, you're good enough to pitch, but you're not good enough to start. Mm. So Sanford, I think, started seven, eight games that year or whatever it was, and, you know, we're doing, I'm coming, Elizabeth, and, and all yeah. those jokes that you do for Sanford and son. And wouldn't you know it, he goes into the ninth inning of a World Series clincher throwing a no-hitter. I, yeah, you and told so that here, story, yeah. Yeah, and so how do you root against that? Yeah. You know that the project's over as soon as the game's over, and you're sad about that. How do you root against a pitcher throwing a no-hitter in a World Series? Better yet, how do you root against a journeyman pitcher mm. throwing a no-hitter in a World Series? You don't. Yeah, well, that's what we I talked about. I, that's what I talked yeah. about earlier is that you, you start to fall in love with, with the guys that are playing right. this game. You're like, I got to root for him. So here I am, you know, Red Sox fan from time started to rooting for the Yankees to not only do this, but to get the no-hitter to, to make history. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, I, I guess the long answer to that is I really don't care. I, you know, it's for me, it's, it's about the story. Or I want to learn something. You know, mm. it doesn't matter if it's streamed or not. Teach me something. I want to teach myself something. So. Uh, I, I will. I will um, say that I do care. You know, I, and I think we all care. But it, it again, to the point of caring, is is like what is the point of caring? You know what I mean? It's just I care enough that if if it, if this team wins and I want them to win, yay. You know, if they don't, well, it's not the end of the world. I'm not going to get upset. I, I, I you guess know, I'm with you with that. Yeah. So I mean, I think we all, when we sit down, we have our two teams. I think our subconsciously we do want one team to beat the other one, you know. Now what now whether this is because you like the team or don't like a team or whether um it's one of these things where um you know, and, and this probably goes to what you do. You want to have a good storyline. So let's just say that, you know, you got a team that's won three out of the seven games that going for the sweep. I bet you'd be rooting for the other team to come back in the series. It would make a good story if they won a couple of games. So, it, it, so you, you're not rooting won. for you're not rooting for the a, a certain team per se. You're rooting for a good series, is what I'm getting at too. So I gotta say, when the Angels made that comeback against the Blue Jays last year, I was ready for that project to be over. I honestly wanted to get to that World Series. Well, I mean, it was intriguing. Mm. And to go through and just kind of like what the Celtics did last week, you know, okay, wow, you forced it. Okay, you you won a game. Okay, you took two. Oh, wow, here we go. All the and so yes, I mean you you get psyched up for oh my gosh, here we go, and then you do what Boston did this week. So yes, yeah, so, uh, so 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 yes, you're right. So yes, we want to know. When you play games, do you, do you play uh, your, your favorite teams? Do you play against teams you don't like? Do you care who wins? How much do you care? How much does that, you know, factor into what you're doing? Do you ever play just two, two kind of, you know, teams that you really don't have a strong feeling about, too? I mean, have you done that before? And I do that purposely sometimes, too, just so I don't care. And sometimes I'll come off a heated game or something like that. It's like, I need to play two teams that I don't care. And I just want to enjoy it. It's got, like, like what I'm going to do with the Stanley Cup Finals this year. 
I, I, I like Vegas, I guess. And now I, I've started, Florida, Florida's grown on me because of what they've done to the other teams. I don't feel so bad anymore. So I, I really don't care who wins. It's a good story either way, and I can sit back and enjoy it. And sometimes I have to do that on, on my gaming table, is play two games, mm-hmm. two teams that don't really, that, that I'm not really rooting heavily for. I guess that's what it is, to lose or win. So, so. anyway, um, so yes, we want to know. Do you care who wins when you play a game? Now, we need to get to our three stars of the week. Yes, we do. All righty. Number one star. I, did, I didn't get permission to use his name yet, um, but he's a newer Patreon, and it's leadoff center fielder. Woohoo! He is our number three star this week in no particular order. I wonder if that would be Ricky Henderson. It could be. That'd be kind of neat. Yeah, sponsoring digital to dice. Yeah. I'd like to get Ricky, that. Ricky. Ricky listens to the show, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure he does. Um, and let me see here. Uh, our number two star, it's the author, uh, J. Thomas Hetrick. Yay! I had a nice long chat with him this week uh, offline about what's going on with him, some of his projects and um, things like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll be hearing more from from yes, uh, from J. Thomas Hetrick in the future. He's the, the author of the Cleveland Spiders book. We had him on the show um, f- fun guy to chat with with baseball. Holy, yes. holy cow! If you like baseball, this is the guy to talk to. Let me tell you, um, it really is fun. And uh, his uh, poll call press is um, is also um, uh, the producer of the uh, Stephen Walker book, uh, the 1969 yes. Washington Senators that I'm, I'm actively reading right now as well. So uh, uh, head over to poll call press, P O C O L press, and he's got some great baseball books over there. So thank you for um, supporting the show. And our number three star, uh, a newer Patreon, is Howard Rothbord. Yay! Howard, thank you so much for coming aboard and um, supporting the show. It means a lot to us here. So we can continue on talking um, tabletop games. And um, I think that's about it. Um, yeah. The feedback was good on the uh, the, the last guest we had on, uh, Marco. We had really good feedback on Marco. He was so fun to talk to. Yes. I'm still talking to him offline a little bit, and we chat on YouTube a little bit, and he's been doing some great, great videos. He did a Stone Cold video, and um, what's fun about Marco's channel is you just see the joy. In oh, absolutely. Because he's a newer gamer like me. In fact, he's a lot newer than me, and I'm still fairly new to this. And he's, he just has that same sparkle in the eye of, like, I found a new game, and look how great this is. And I, you know, and then it's like, hey, I found another new game, and I got to show you guys. And it's just, he's, like, beaming with joy when he does his videos, which is just kind of what I do, too, when I find a new game or, yeah. or something like that. Because it's like, man, this is this is so awesome, you know, that we get to play these games and to play our favorite teams oh, and, and the whole bit. It's just, it's such a fun, fun hobby, so... Anyway, so so we wrap up uh, episode 186. 186. All righty, so this has been episode 186 of the Digital to Dice podcast. Uh, ways to get a hold of us, digitaltodice.com is the website. 978-751-DICE is the text line. And I've been having some really good conversations on the text line as well this week. Um, it was kind of, yeah, I was laying in bed, not feeling too good. And I'm just texting some people back, talking about games and stuff and the whole bit. It's really kind of fun. Uh, digital to dice at yahoo.com is the email. And over on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice. And again, we want to know, do you care who wins? That was the topic this week. All right, Ron, thanks for coming on. As always. And we'll talk to you and everybody else later. Bye-bye. <laughs>